Hi, and welcome back to the CISS Aero Academy. I'm Cyrus Hung, and today, for our last video, we will be looking at the turning of flight. Let's get started. We will begin with a short recap on what we learned during the axis of rotation video, as that is very important for this video, followed by defining inertia and load factor, then talking about yaw and pitch, before finally going through adverse yaw, rate of turn, and turn radius. So, let's begin with a recap on the axes of rotation. Here is the master sheet that we had from our last video. Remember that each axis passes through the center of gravity. Rotation about the longitudinal axis is known as rolling. This can be controlled through the ailerons. Rotation about the vertical axis is called yaw, and is controlled by the rudder. Rotation about the lateral axis is called pitch, and is controlled by the elevator. So, the fundamental problem with turning flight is Newton's first law, which states that an object will remain at rest or in uniform motion in a straight line unless acted upon by an external force. In order to turn an aircraft, you must first overcome inertia. To achieve this, a pilot uses the aileron to create a turning force. By turning the ailerons on the outside of the turn down while turning the ailerons on the inside of the turn up, differing amounts of lift are produced. This is because the angle of the aileron increases or decreases camber. This in turn causes the airplane to roll, referred to as going into a bank. This also adds a horizontal component to the lift vector. As one can see, the lift vector has now split into two parts. Remember, only the vertical component creates effective lift, while the horizontal component allows the airplane to move sideways. This essentially causes the airplane to slide to the left. One important thing to note here, however, is the existence of the load factor. While we're turning, the centripetal force, or the horizontal component of the lift factor, which we'll get to later, generated causes an increase in load factor. The official definition of load factor is the total air load acting on the glider, or aircraft in our case, to the gross weight of the glider, or aircraft. During straight and level flight, the load factor is equal to 1. The units for load factors are usually represented in terms of g. At 1g, you have straight and level flight. Load factor can also be expressed with this equation. As one can see, as bank angle increases, the load factor increases as well. As shown in the equation, when an aircraft rolls into a bank, the loading factor increases. This is due to centripetal force. When an aircraft rolls into a bank, the newly added horizontal component points towards the center of rotation, and is known as the centripetal force. This also creates a reaction force in the opposite direction. The centripetal force provides additional force acting upon the aircraft, thus increasing the load factor. The reaction here is generated by Newton's third law, that every action must have an equal and opposite reaction. The load factor is important as it increases with the square of speed. Aircrafts are designed to only withstand a certain amount of g's, so pilots must be careful so as to not increase the load factor too much. However, simply using the ailerons to bank is not the full story for getting an aircraft to turn. Let's go back to the previous demonstration of rolling to see why this is. 
Again, centripetal force and rolling is not the full story. There are several other forces and parts that are in play here. See, without the other forces and mechanisms, the airplane would simply do a sort of side shuffle to the left. This is not what we want. After the slide to the left, the airplane would just simply go back to facing the original direction. What we really want is the airplane to turn and to face a different direction. Like us. In actual flight, one must combine all three of these rotations in order to have a coordinated turn. So, in order to better help you guys understand this, I'm going to explain this concept similar to another YouTube video I found that explained this beautifully. The link to his video will be in the credits if you want to check it out, which I highly recommend. I'll be going over a shorter version of his explanation. We will first look at two hypothetical scenarios independent of the other airplane parts. The first of which is using only the rudders to turn, and the second of which is only using the elevators to achieve a turn. So, let's start with the first scenario. What if, by solely using the rudders, we turn the aircraft? Let's look at the scenario. Theoretically, this would work. It will allow you to turn, however, it is very inefficient. And it puts a lot of stress on the aircraft, which is not good structurally. Now, let us examine the second scenario, only using the elevators. Let's say the airplane was at a 90 degrees angle bank, which, as you may have guessed, is not possible, but just stick with me here. If the airplane were to pitch upwards while the airplane is at a 90 degrees bank, it would pitch into a turn, like fuss. In actual aircraft turning, one must combine all three of these effects in order to perform a coordinated turn. So, what is a coordinated turn? Well, a coordinated turn is where an aircraft turns tangent to a circle, with no loss in altitude. So, how does an aircraft do this? First, the aircraft rolls into a bank. Though it does not go to 90 degrees, that's for sure. This adds a horizontal component to the lift vector, as we have seen before, and this adds a centripetal force. Second, this centripetal force causes the aircraft to shift to the left. As a result of this, the relative airflow felt by the aircraft also changes. The new relative airflow approaching the aircraft comes from the side. When this relative airflow hits the rudder, it yaws the aircraft towards your desired turn direction. However, it is important to note that for the sole purpose of turning, the rudder does not need to be used. It is used for something else which we'll get to, but for now, just think of the rudder as facing straight ahead and it's not being used yet. Fourth, in addition to the previous elements, the aircraft also pitches into a roll which works because, as you have seen before, the airplane is at a bank. The use of the elevator is also important since the angle of bank decreases the amount of effective lift you generate by sacrificing some of the lift you generate into centripetal force. So, increasing lift is important to make sure the vertical component of the lift vector supports the weight. And now, the grand result, a great sweeping turn. Now, what is the rudder used for then? The answer is adverse yaw, which is a scenario in which, while rolling into a bank, the outer wing generates more drag, which in this case is the right wing. This is because the lift vector of the outer wing is higher, and thus induced drag increases as more air rushes up. This creates yaw in the undesired direction. We're trying to turn to the left, but the airplane yaw to the right. So, 
the true purpose of the rudder during a turn is to compensate for adverse yaw. By turning the rudder towards your desired turn direction, you yaw towards your turn, compensating for adverse yaw. Now we move on to the rate of turn, which is simply the degrees turned divided by time. Here is the formula for the rate of turn. As you increase the angle of bank, the rate of turn increases as well, which is reflected by the formula. Inversely, increasing the airspeed decreases the rate of turn. On the other hand, the turn radius is the horizontal distance traveled in completing a turn. Unlike rate of turn, the turn radius increases with the square of speed, while decreasing with the bank angle. Here is a quick conclusion page of everything we learned today. To roll into a pitch, the ailerons are used to add a horizontal component to the lift vector. This horizontal component is the centripetal force, and this increases the load factor, increasing the g's the aircraft is withstanding. This rolling, when combined with changes in yawing from the rudder, as well as pitching into the roll using the elevators, produces a sweeping coordinated turn. Adverse yaw occurs because deferring pressures on the wing caused by the ailerons create more induced drag on the outer wing. It is counteracted by facing the rudder towards the desired direction. The rate of turn is the degrees turned divided by time, while the turn radius is the horizontal distance traveled while turning. Here are the sources and links for this video. And that's a wrap. Good job, guys. You've made it to the end of the series. Thank you for staying by my side all this time, and I hope that you learned something. Goodbye for now.